what is the impact of the blockade on ordinary Cubans? Okay, well, the impact of the blockade in daily life in Cuba is it has a transversal uh, impact on the social life of every Cuban. There is no even one single uh, Cuban alive that have not suffered the impact of the blockade because through more than 60 years we have been suffering from these policies uh, from the United States. In terms of um, global impact in economical damage of the blockade, we're talking about 114 uh, billion dollars of damage and if we take into account the uh, devaluation of the dollar throughout the history we're talking it, it rise to more than 700 uh, billions so yeah the impact is in every every sphere in health uh, for getting the most basic things in our daily life food uh, medical supplies uh, any tool for uh, in in any uh, workplace so um, this uh, very transversal impact have been damaging the, P the Cuban people for many many years and uh, even though you have uh, any kind of ideological position it, it doesn't matter if you are left wing, white wing, right wing uh, we are talking about something related with justice something related with uh, humanity so uh, and um, the blockade has been causing too much damage and for too much time. So, Why do you think the U.S. wants to crush the Cuban Revolution? Yeah, Why is the US trying to crush the Cuban definitely Revolution? a successful socialist uh, developing state um, in the Western Hemisphere, just 90 miles from the United States. It's an ideological threat for the United States, for the system, the capitalist system that it also um, um, uh, evokes, you know. Uh, of course, during the history, if you take into account what Cuba has been able to achieve, and not only what has achieved for its own people, but also to other countries, like the medical brigade uh, Henry Reef, um, and all the professors and the uh, um, uh, specialists in sports and other assistance that we have been uh, sending to other countries providing some aid uh, in different sectors of course that's a threat because it's against the values that they are trying to promote the individualistic so, uh, sense of uh, of um, try to alienate people, try to isolate and uh, to become more individualistic. So, um, and also um, taking into account that Cuba could, the, the bad example that Cuba could uh, be for other countries, not only in other regions, but also in, in Latin America. They consider Latin America their backyard. Well, in definition right now, uh, according to Biden, we are the front yard, not the back yard. It's, he tried to, to fix it, but it, it, get, it got worse. So uh, definitely the doctrine, uh, Mon uh, Monroe Doctrine, which is like in the, in the back, uh, how you call it, backbone? In the backbone of the uh, American approach towards uh, Latin America. Uh, is still there. The neocolonial mentality trying to control Latin America is, is, is there. And Cuba, of course, is a bad example of that. Why should a young person in Australia support the Cuban Revolution? Well, um, mostly because what it represented and the, the changes and the transformation that the Cuban Revolution carried out within the, the Cuban population, but also because the international activism that Cuba has been doing in in international arena. I, I'm talking that uh, Cuba has been not only with medical doctors, but Cuba also supported emancipation pr processes like in Africa, in, in Latin America, and, and also offered an alternative to to the globalized uh, capitalists that we are uh, living right now so yeah definitely Cuba is one of those alternatives that we 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 should look at 
and we cannot look at Cuba or judge Cuba as uh, comparing like you were in a developed country. Cuba has its own uh, characteristic, its own condition. You have to understand Cuba and then under you will you will be able to understand what Cuba has been able to, to achieve.